So here we are with question six from the 2020 chemistry VCAR exam. This one looks to do with fuel. So methane gas, which is CH4, can be produced by the breakdown of waste in landfills. It is primary source component, sorry, it's also the primary component of natural gas, which can be used to produce energy through combustion. Write the equation for the incomplete combustion of CH4 to produce carbon monoxide. So incomplete combustion, it tells you it's carbon monoxide, which is nice, but you should also know that even if they just said um, the incomplete combustion, you should know what the product is, which is carbon monoxide. But that's going to be CH4 plus O2, and that's going to produce CO plus H2O. Now, in terms of balancing these guys here, you balance the carbon first. So there's one carbon, so that's already balanced. You balance the hydrogen next. I've got four hydrogens here. I need four hydrogens on this side, so two H2O. And now I'm ready to balance the oxygen here. I've got two, three oxygens. How do I get three from two here? I'll take one and a half. It's all right to use half or fractions in your combustion reactions. However, um, halves don't normally go in other reactions, but in a combustion reaction, you're allowed to use decimal points or halves in the um, coefficient of my oxygen. I then need to put that in with state, so you should know that methane's a gas, the oxygen will be a gas, the carbon monoxide will be a gas, um, and the H2O here will be a gas as well, because we're assuming there's going to be um, standard laboratory conditions unless otherwise stated. Sometimes people will put this, sorry, some people put this as a liquid, which it should be. Um, so gas would be if uh, the states of high water. Generally, we write water as liquid. So I'm actually going to write that properly as liquid um, because our information, our data booklet, is all based around standard laboratory conditions, which is 25 degrees Celsius, where water is a liquid. Some people argue that water here should be a gas because it's a combustion reaction, so therefore it's going to produce a lot of heat and combust or sorry, not combust, and vaporize the water, but we are, we'll just talk about water being liquid for now anyway, and we'll move on. Anyway, 20 grams of methane is kept at 5 litres in a steel container at 25 degrees Celsius. What would the pressure be? All right, this is a PV equals NRT um, equation, so therefore we are using the universal gas constant here. So therefore, I'm going to be looking for my pressure, so P equals NRT divided by V, so therefore I can just bang in my numbers here. My number of moles, I'll get my number of moles is M over MR, so let's take 20 divided by uh, 16. So what's that? 20 divided by 16 uh, on 20 divided by 16 gives me 1.25. So therefore it's 1.25 times 8.31 times my temperature which will be in Kelvin, so that's going to be 273 plus 25 is 298 times 298, all divided by um, my volume, which is 5 litres. So therefore, I take my 1.25, I'll times that by 8.31, or times that by 280, so 298, equals this number, and then I divide that by 5. Um, I do that in two stages because I want to know what this whole number at the top is and then divide it by five. If I didn't do that in two stages, I run the risk of it dividing only this number here by five and multiplying it out. So I always like to, if I've got a fraction here or if I'm working on a lot of things happening up the top and something one thing down the bottom, I'll do everything up the top, work out what that answer is, and then I'll divide it by five in the end. But that's going to be 619.095 kilopascals of pressure. My, I'm looking at two um, significant figures, so that's going to be 620 kilopascals, or 6.2 times 10 to the power of 2 kilopascals for significant figures there. That's my response to that question. Moving on to C, a Bunsen burner is used to heat a beaker of containing that much water. Complete combustion of this much methane raises the temperature by that much. Calculate the percentage of the Bunsen burner's energy lost to the environment. All right, so how much energy has been lost? Well, how much energy was produced in the first place? So let's work out how much energy there was in this methane. So that's equals, um, sorry, energy from my methane will be my mass times my heat of combustion from my data booklet. So if I'm using 0 0.485, my heat of combustion from my data booklet, if I try and find that here somewhere, where is it? Heat of combustion in my data booklet. Won't be a second, it's not there. It is not there. Where is it? 
my data booklet is all over the place at the moment. I think I've found it. So the next page. There it is. My heat of combustion of methane is 55.6, 55.6. So therefore I can work out that 0.485 times 55.6 gives me 26.966 kilojoules of energy was released from my methane. The energy in my water, therefore, so how much was actually absorbed by the water, will be um, Q equals mc delta t. So therefore it's going to be my mass of my water times by my specific capacity, 1.48, times by my temperature change here, which is going to be 12.3. 12.3, so how much energy was absorbed by my water? 350 times 4.18 times by 12.3. That gives me 17994.9 is 17.99 kilojoules. All right, so what's the difference between these two numbers? Let's just work out the difference. So divide that by 1,000 to get it into kilojoules. Now the difference, which is how much energy would have been lost, so take that away from... 26.966, that means we had, um, therefore, 8.97 kilojoules was lost. I want to know the percentage efficiency, or the percentage that was lost, so therefore it would be um, what was lost divided by the total times by 100, so 8.6, sorry, 8.97 divided by 26.96 times by 100 equals a number. So that there divided by 26.966 equals that times by 100 gives me 33.27% was lost to the surroundings. Um, again, let's look for significant figures. I can see that this here um, is going to be Three significant figures is the lowest, so therefore it's going to be 33.3% lost. And it's my answer. Moving on to part D, compare the environmental impact of methane obtained by landfill to that obtained by natural gas. Alrighty, so what do we have here? So um, we have landfill um, will be considered like biogas, so therefore it's going to be mostly carbon neutral, is carbon neutral um, but uh, natural gas adds to the CO2 in the atmosphere so um, natural gas so landfill which is biogas I'll write that down here as well so bio gas that's considered carbon neutral should know that straight away um, it's a biofuel so therefore we assume that the amount of energy or the amount of carbon that's um, produced when we burn it is equal to the amount that was initially taken in when we grew all the stuff there so basically we're just not adding to the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere but natural gas is we're worth two marks over here so i need to add another one there so another dot point what else is a problem? Um, natural gas needs to be mined. So natural gas needs to be mined, which can cause um, damage to the environment, whereas um, landfill um, will not. Clearly landfill can cause damage to the environment because we have um, obviously leakage and stuff like that so therefore sometimes you have leakage into the ground and groundwater contamination through landfill but in general natural gas um, which can be mined. I'll also put there the fact that it's actually can be ore um, via fracking because it's another way of producing methane. Um, that will cause damage to the environment because of the chemicals that are used to actually extract the natural gas in a mine or through the process of fracking. So there's another thing there. I reckon you can have a number of different things here. Because we're just doing comparison, these are all differences. If you can do comparison, you can also do similarities so that we might also be able to say, although we're only going to have two marks here, we can also say that both produce CO2 when burnt or combusted. 
um, because compare means similarities and differences. So if you can think about what's going to be the same about those two, um, that's obviously um, something you can think about. It always have to link back to environment, so I can't talk about the energy content, even though the energy content of natural gas is going to be much higher than CH4 um, than biogas. So you're going to have a larger percentage of methane in natural gas than um, landfill gas, um, but we have to link it back to the environmental impact. So they can't just talk about energy content or ease of production or renewability is kind of important there, but definitely um, if we can talk about how our environment is hurt by the, um, or not hurt by these two types of methane, that would be ideal. And that is the answers to question six. Hopefully I've explained that relatively well. I've kind of glossed over a couple of points there, but if you have any questions, please um, chuck it in the comments.